I was born into dentistry pretty much. Uh, my family's from Mexico, <clears throat> living right on the border, and my aunt got her degree from den dental school in Monterey, Mexico, the year that I was born in 1957. And in Mexico, they, you have the, your office was in your home. She was a single woman. She way ahead of her time. I mean, she's 85 right now. She was way ahead of her time. She didn't marry until she was in her 30s. She got her degree. She had her own discretionary income, which was not even heard of, you know, in the 50s and 60s for, for women of her, her age. And she had, uh, she lived at home with, her, with my grandparents, and her office was in the home. So her sisters, my, one of my, is, was my mom, would come and they would bring their kids. Well, to make a long story short, the snowbirds in the Midwest would come down to the border during the winter. They would seek dental care across the border and she needed translators. And so my sister and I were the gringas. We spoke English. There, nobody else spoke English except for the two of us. So very, very, well, at the age of four, I was translating for her, and my sister was too, and we're both dentists. Um, my cousins who were playing in the same reception area, they're dentists, they were sisters, they're dentists. There's nine of us, <clears throat> and the power of the role model is incredible. Don't ever underestimate. You see someone with a fire of, of interest in, in what you're doing, touch them because um, you, you can change somebody's life in a really great way. I didn't go into dentistry because there was money. I didn't go into dentistry because I thought it was gonna, I was going to help people, and I'm really sorry to say that. That's what makes me freaky. I went into dentistry because I saw a person really enjoying what she was doing. There, this made her happy to the extent that it made her nieces happy, it made her daughter happy, made her brother-in-law happy. I mean, we're talking about nine people that became dentists. Then four of those nine people married dentists. <laughs> and then one of those persons who married a dentist, her brother and her sister are dentists. I mean, it's just, um, we're, we're a freaky family when it comes to dentistry. We have no originality, and yet we are all incredibly happy. My husband, is, I was one of that married a, uh, a dentist. I married the guy that sat in front of me in dental school. I highly recommend it. 35 years later, he proposed to me. I said it to somebody I, uh, that he proposed to me the night before he graduated, which I thought was so awful because he just stole the dental school thunder. You know, my, I wanted to wait. But so I went into practice for a little bit, and um, I really wanted something more. And I um, wasn't, d dentistry was very different. Dental school was very different at the time. And I thought, boy, I, I'd really like to just go back and teach. I kind of always wanted to be a teacher, too. Um, so when I was eight, when someone asked me, what do you want to be? I wanted to be a dentist, but I thought, oh, I really want to be a teacher. And to have, I, I ended up here in the faculty for 16 years. And it, it remains some of the best times of my life. If I go back and think about, about not just the people, the, the colleagues, um, but the students. I mean, I, Kevin Beichman, Dr. Beichman, orthodontist, best, one of the best classes that I ever had in those 16 years. It was so, so fun. Well, teaching brought a lot, um, and I will say this, if I can, I'll try to just give you these little bits of wisdom, because I've been at this for 30 plus years. I graduated in 1983 from this school, and um, I said yes to everything. I said yes to everything, and some of the things, do you all know Dr. Elaine Neenan in the dental school? Is she still the Dean of um, External Affairs? She's retired. Okay, well, Dr. Elaine Neenan was one of those people that would ask you to do something, but she would never quite tell you what was involved in it. And there was always so much more, and you were, it was always so much more work than you ever dreamed it was going to be, and you were kind of mad at her during it, but afterwards, you didn't realize what that experience was. And what that experience included was the networking. You would meet people who touched your lives and who were always happy to be a part of it. So wherever you, whatever school you're in, if someone asks you to do something, do it. Do it because it's good for you. Do it because it's good for you. Do it because it's good for you in every single way, truthfully. Um, <clears throat> so I was on faculty. During the time that I was on faculty, I was teaching DS1s, DS2s. I felt like I'd lost my clinical relevance. And so Dr. Summit, who was chairman at this time, allowed me to do what's called an advanced education in general dentistry. So I, 
had gotten tenured, and he says, what do you want to do now? I said, I want to go back to school. So he let me go back and do an AGD, and that was, again, one of the greatest professional uh, experiences because I got back into dentistry, um, clinical. I, it gave me confidence. Um, and when, you know, for those of you here who are in academics and in clinical practice, being able to be touched by those two realms makes you better in each one. If you're a good clinician, you'll be a good teacher. If you're a good teacher, you'll be a good clinician. To this day, I look at my preps and wonder what I would grade them. I did a crown prep today, and I thought, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'd give that a good grade. Not, not bad at all. In that saying yes piece, uh, I spoke two languages, like I mentioned earlier. The American Dental Association needed someone to speak to the Spanish population. We were having a lot of trouble in dentistry. Um, the AIDS virus was transmitted clinically in a dental office in Florida. And um, it was, in terms of, within the realm of healthcare, it was, there were very dark days, and it was a really dark time for dentistry. And the American Dental Association was reaching out, um, you know, People were afraid to go to the dentist. And so I basically was asked, could you please just start reaching out to the Spanish-speaking population? Didn't want to do it. Did it. And when I talk about networking, that led to um, a spokespersonship with the American Dental Association. And then they said, you know what? We need someone who to host this show, it's just a public service announcement, and if someone could host this show and do it in English and Spanish, it would just be a great thing for, for people to be able to, to, just to reach out for people, to give people things to talk to their dentist about, because people don't even know why they go to the dentist. They think they should go, but they're not sure, but if we give them something to talk to the dentist about, or maybe something to think about that might impact their own lives, this might be good. So I said yes, and again, um, it was wonderful, it was 14 years. I hosted a show called The Dental Minute. It was a 60-second little blurb. It won a Nielsen Media Research Award for the longest-running uh, public service program in the history of public television. I did 500 shows that aired over a million times, and someone posted on Facebook, one of my for former students, Tracy McBee, posted on my Facebook. She goes, I was driving along to Lubbock, and I hear Dr. Maria Lopez Howell, you know, talking about local and topical anesthetics. These things go on forever. So when you say yes to your profession, to your school, to the practical, to just, just saying yes is huge. It's service to your profession. And I, don't, I can't imagine anyone else having had as much fun in serving their profession as I have. Um, you know, this is really a wonderful event. But one of the things, that when, when someone talks to me or if I go somewhere, I love to hear about their mistakes. I like to hear about, you know, okay, what, did, what, do you, what could you have done better? And, um, and I really have just gotten this. I mean, after almost 35 years of practice, I'm just getting, I'm happy to say I'm just getting this. I don't take things personally. And um, like when your colleague has a problem, when a patient has a problem, when a family member has a problem, you sort of take it on and that adds stress to your life. And what I'm, what I'm feeling now and what I see in my colleagues and my friends who have really relaxed is that, you know, people have issues um, when they come to the dentist and people have issues at home. And I've learned this through the spokesperson, being a spokesperson, is that communication is still just about the only thing that you can give to someone uh, if you can help them. And in our particular profession, going to the dentist uh, really incites a lot of fear, um, a lot of upset, a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration. People are frustrated that it costs so much. People are frustrated that, um, that they didn't do enough to keep themselves out of a situation. And of all of those emotions, they kind of express it in one way, and that's in an anger. And sometimes you can kind of get caught up in the drama, or sometimes even your staff, they get caught up in that. And I think that um, not getting caught up in that, not taking things personally, sitting back, taking a breath, and realizing how can I help this person without getting caught up in that uh, will really just 
you can make a lot of strides in, in actually helping one, because that's what you want to do. You want to help them. And if you can help them be calm by your being calm, it's, it's, a, it's a huge benefit. I have to see if I just look at my notes really quick. Oh, and here we go. Here we go. This is really good. Um, I'm feeling evangelical. Um, don't give up the learning because, um, and I've said this before to, to another group, what I see is that people that pursue excellence by learning are the people that never get burned out. That's the group that stays excited about what they're doing and wants to keep learning and wants to know how to better treat their patient. Okay, how can I stay excited? Well, it's by learning. I mean, I'm afraid I'm running out of time. I'm not kidding you. What, what's happening in dentistry with, with you guys right now is so fun. The digital world has impacted our particular profession in such an immense way. It is just darn fun to do dentistry. It really is. And so I feel like, oh my God, I don't have that many years left. I just, I'm running out of time. I want to, I want to, I, I, I mean in dentistry. I'm, you know, I'll, I'm thinking of retiring at, oh, I thought. I thought I wanted to retire at 65. And that's only five years away. And what we're finding now, our financial planners are finding out that dentists who enjoy what they're doing don't want to retire because it's getting easier, the digital world, and we're more calm about it because we figured out that we're not taking on people's problems, that we are practicing dentistry in peace, and it's really fun, and who wants to quit? It's really just a ton of fun. So keep up the learning, because when you learn and say yes, you're going to surround your pe yourself with people who are, want to keep learning and who want to keep saying yes. All righty. Is that it? Yeah, I think that was it. Thank you so much.